We had a veritable avalanche of comments of people writing in telling us how wonderful the South Australian pie floater was. And due to such overwhelming demand, we've decided that today I'll be making another recipe, Elena. How do you feel about that? I'll wait till I taste it. It is blowing an absolute gale outside, so yeah, we thought it'd be a nice idea to cook something and tell you a story. Today we're going to be telling you the story of Mad Dog Spearfish Legend, a concept that we were working on for quite some time, but never came to fruition. Mad Dog Spearfish Legend. Mad Dog, this is so nice. We should do this more often. Mad Dog was sort of like a, a parody. You know when people get right into their sports or whatever? Well. That was basically what I was doing and Elaine was just hammering me about it. Who came up with the idea? I think it was you. Was it? You were addicted to spear fishing at that stage. Yeah. Nothing's changed. This episode was proudly sponsored by Mr Lee's Noodles. Which Riley has decided to cook us for dinner. Talk about lazy. These are amazing. For a single handed sale, you boil up some water and you've got enough for a coffee and you stick some in the noodles. And if it's rough, you just, you have to have some foods like this. You just have to. You got a single handed sale coming up. I do. And I'll be using them throughout. If you're in Australia, you can grab them from Woolies or on the website. And there's some stuff on there that Elena loves as well. Like there's nothing, there's none of those ingredients that don't know MSG. what they are. Well, the, and the ones that are indecipherable, like yeah. the. But anyway, Elena, I Elena approves. approved. <laughs> That's cauliflower. Is it? Mm. That's real veggies. And Mr. Lee is actually a real person. His name's Damien Lee. Yeah, look, you see, our artistic vision for Mad Dog Spearfish Legend was a kind of avant garde Jack Cousteau meets. Um, Seymour Hoffman in a postmodern Leechian quasi rom com. The script we actually acquired from an online auction, uh, just a random bunch of papers found at the bottom drawer of Charles Bukowski's desk, crammed between a bottle of scotch and a ham sandwich for a steal. <laughs> The normative subtext, of course, was intended to be the classic hero's tale. Call to adventure, crisis, meeting a mentor, revelation, transformation, and eventually atonement. Quite boring, really, but really marketable. So yeah, unfortunately, the whole thing had to be janked because the main actor nearly died on the first day. Where are you going? So it was back in 2015 uh, in Los Roques, the islands above Venezuela. Your favourite set of islands. Yeah, when people ask me my top three places I've ever been, Los Roques is always one of them. It's an archipelago of islands, beautiful white sandy beaches. Spanish. Colourful little buildings, cute old ladies. Cheap lobster. Um, and it's also the birthplace of MDSFL. Is that what we're calling it? MDSFL? Yep. I like it. And the... Carbonara. So um Mad Dog, are you even listening to me? Mad Dog, are you practicing your breath holds? We named it that back then, back when it was uh because I was talking about it so much we needed to. Yep, so Riley had this acri idea. Acronymize it? Yeah. Acronymize it? So Riley had this idea and we we had left Los Roques um, and we were on one of the outer islands on our way to another island called Arves. So we stayed overnight at this island and in the morning Riley was like, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna film the first like bit of this movie or whatever Mad Dog was gonna be. Morning, doll. How'd you sleep? There's a coffee for you downstairs. Jeez, I'm onto a beauty here! We had to set up the camera on a mono hole which would occasionally rock with no tripod and Elena took off in the tender and I was holding onto a rope pretending <laughs> that I'd shot like a shark or something. Oh jeez, I'm onto a beauty here! When we and watched was, back that footage for the first time we were in funny. tears. It was so much fun. Like my childhood dream was to grow up and be able to make silly movies and now I have that, like, it's, I, I'm living it. Clear off out of here, you muscle! <laughs> 
So continuing on with the story of uh, MDSFL, we uh, the birthplace was in Los Roques and then it was an interlude where we went through the Panama Canal. We waited for this massive beast to nearly run us over and then this time the water sunk. We went through another two gates and we were only a straight stretch away from reaching salty Pacific water. Go pretend like you're doing something. Over past Galapagos, picked up Dad, sailed across the Pacific, and then that's when we found ourselves with a bit of time on our hands and could like really focus our efforts and um, return to the production. Mad dog, spearfish, legend. Yeah. As it were. So it was in the Marquesas, and this is where we met uh, Mark and Travis from the boat Heaps, Heaps Good, Good, and they helped rally install all the BNG gear that we'd gotten. We've been worked to the absolute bone. I don't really um, feel like we've been appreciated at all. And then in, not even in return, because they helped us, then they helped us again. We asked them if they could come up no, to this restaurant. Yeah, well, we just had the, like, we just started talking about it, and they're like, that's awesome. Can we help? And we were like, well, we're gonna we're gonna go and take over a restaurant tomorrow night if you're interested. I don't think they were as excited as that, but they were, you know, interested at they least. They were pretty excited. Interested enough for us I to be like... I remember Trav in particular was... <laughs> he yeah. made a great waiter. <laughs> so anyway, we went up to this restaurant up on a hill where we wanted the next Mad Dog scene to be. We had to ask permission to use the restaurant. We had a script written out, like it was a very, very serious, full production. We'd each been assigned roles. Yeah, the waitress wasn't happy about this, like... Elena was director, producer, slash talent. On. And this is when you started holding your breath. Okay, so Tracy and Steve came here last week. They brought the kids and they had a little bit of an accident under the table. Um, and the waitress had to clean it up. It was very, very unfortunate. Anyway, she said that the um, macaroni cheese was really good, locally made, and the carbonara. So, yeah. Um, are you even listening to me? Mad Dog, are you practicing your breath holds? I was trying to show to the camera that I was holding my breath. So I was holding my breath, but also trying to exaggerate it. So I was making my face go red. Whatever you do, just don't do that. Yeah. Unless you want to try and pass out. You looked like weird though. Yeah. So Elena thought I was joking. But scary. You can see in the footage that I've just completely blanked out. And that, well, then I don't remember. Should so. we watch that footage now? Yeah. I just found the footage where Riley passes out. Vein in your head pops out. Oh my gosh, I don't even want to watch this. Where is, where gone. is it? You're gone, gone there. Yeah. to fit for like 15 seconds and then you woke up and you were like what happened yeah. and you thought you'd had a big night on the piss yeah you remember that's what yeah. you said you're like i thought i got really drunk and i couldn't remember what happened yeah we weren't even drinking that day jeez that's so bad that actually makes me feel scared looking at your eyes look at you you're not even there <laughs> The night and the waitress. I just remember looking over. The waitress was like, she, "Like, what on earth is happening here?" And I was wearing just spear fishing pants. <laughs> For you, sir. Medium rare. What else is seriously funny too is that when Travis, when the waiter um, was running away from Riley, Travis actually tripped over him. <laughs> <laughs> Messed up his Did legs. He? Yeah, he cut up his legs outside. Me and Travis were looking at Riley through the camera. Well, Travis was actually looking at Riley. I was looking at him through the camera. So when he started having a fit and he fell and he knocked a plate and a glass with him, I initially thought he was joking. So you were like, what, what on earth are you doing breaking plates and smashing shit Yeah, I was really there. angry at him for at least three seconds, like furious. <laughs> like honestly, I was like, I'm going to kill him. And then, <laughs> and then Travis said, oh, he actually passed out. He actually passed out. 
And then I looked at the ground rather than the camera. And I was like, Wiley, because he was having a fit. So I w and then I came too, but I was still doing this sort of thing. And that's not on film either. No, but I, I was I really, stop really, really flipping out off the side of the chair, going like. Well, you guys, it's a real shame that Mad Dog never got released. One of the great travesties in all of film history, Alana. Really? Go down in the annals. Really could have been something. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that tale over some food. Please like the video if you want to see more Boat Life episodes. I really love making them. And um, thanks for watching. Soy a latte. Now I'm back on that road again. A few more stops and I'll see my friends in the Willow. Oh, you know it's family. Same brother with a different story.